Okay, this is the uh, IS 143 metal casting laboratory. What we're going to talk about today is um, casting these cylindrical bars for machining into the screwdriver blanks. Uh, we're also going to talk about how to make an individual casting, which is a little bit more complex. Um, so what we're going to do is, this is called a match plate. The reason why it's a match plate because the uh, both sides are matched together, hopefully, so that this casting will come out and be round instead of shifted slightly. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to ram sand that's been mixed. It has some uh, uh, some strength to it against the, this pattern, and then remove the pattern, create a cavity, fill that cavity up with metal. Okay. In order to uh, make this casting, what we're going to need to do is pick out a flask. The flask we're going to use for the bar things uh, are marked with a blue on, on the side of the flask, and you can see this also marks somewhat blue on this uh, pattern match. Okay, what we're going to do is, the flask has two sides to it. The top part is called the cope, C-O-P-E. The bottom part is called the drag, because it drags in the ground. Okay. Um, the drag always has pin, the pins on it, okay, at least in the United States. Okay, what we're going to do is, we're going to put the pattern between the cope and the drag. And then we're going to ram the drag up first, and this is where most people screw up. They, they ram the cope up first, and then you have to flip it over to ram the drag up, and then you have to flip it over again to pour the metal into it. Okay, so you want to ram the drag first, because therefore you're not lifting that whole mold over again. Okay, we're also going to need a bottom board. You can see that this bottom board is painted blue as well, so everything is color coded. In order to make this mold, we're going to need some sand. So we're going to have to actually take some sand from underneath, uh, underneath your uh, actual bin and put it into the, the mauler. Okay, the mauler is in this wheelbarrow here. And what we're going to do is, this sand is, has clay in it. Okay? And clay doesn't, if you can see it here, when it's dry, it doesn't have much strength. If we add moisture to this, we're going to have some compactability. We're actually going to have to be able to uh, mold it around our pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the, uh, the top of the molar that has the wheels in order to mix the sand into it. We're going to lower it onto here without cutting our hands off. Okay, that's the uh, key words there because you can see that everything on here is set up to cut your hands off. These uh, these little uh, dogs here need need to be lined up. with this part of the muller, okay? You see the dog is supposed to go down between there. If, not, if that is not lined up properly, the top will start to spin when you turn the muller on because these big wheels are gonna to start to rotate and mix the sand up. How much sand should you put in there? About what you see here, okay? About halfway full in the wheelbarrow. Okay, the crane hoist is pneumatic. It has an up and a down arrow, okay? Pretty straightforward. If I hit the up arrow, it goes up. Down arrow goes down fairly quickly, so make sure that no one else is right around uh, this equipment. This is a very dangerous piece of equipment. This top part weighs about 500 pounds. You don't want it to fall on you. Okay, so we're gonna lower this down, making sure it's lined up. You can have maybe someone on the other side help you line it up. push the, the valve halfway down, it, it, you can you try to make it go slower. Okay. Now notice that when it's all the way down, it still hasn't quite closed up yet. This is somewhat dangerous. If you leave this, if you leave this partially lifted, okay, in other words, if there's any uh, tension on this on this chain, you turn the ball around, it's going to drop down against that seam there, okay? So, uh, if, if this ha doesn't have any slack to do that, the muller is going to start spinning around and creating uh, havoc, okay? And eventually it'll probably rip the cord out, which it did last time, uh, and it turns itself off, but we don't want to see that because it becomes fairly dangerous. Okay, so you want to have a little bit of slack here on, on this hoist when you can fix that. Um, Okay, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to put water in here. And uh, 
As this is mulling, we're going to add water to it. Okay? So I'm going to turn it on. It's plugged in over here. Everyone's standing away. See how it lowered down. Okay, I'm going to add the water. You can always add more water. You can never take any of the water away. So make sure that you wait for a while to check the sand. If it's if it's got too much water and it, it'll turn to mud, you'll hear that the motor start to make a different noise. It's, it's, it's very hard for the, the muller to actually mix the sand up. You might see it bounce around a little bit. That's an indication that the sand's uh, either either just getting ready for or, or it's too wet. Sort of see down in here if you look uh, just from one angle, and you can see if it's wet. Here you go. Okay, so far we've added two cups, so we're not quite there yet. We want to wait for at least 30 seconds to see if the uh, water gets mixed in and if it's if it's right, because it, it'll take a little while for the clay to become active. Okay, at this point I want to check and see if the sand's good enough for, uh, for use. I'm going to turn off the muller. Okay, unplug it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lift it up. And... your hand under there at this point. What we want to do is move the, uh, the top part of the muller out of the way so that it doesn't fall on your hand. Okay? It's almost there. What you want the sand to do is to be able to squeeze it in your hand and, and not have any sticking to your hand. In other words, you don't want it too wet. It'll actually get mud stuck to your hand. So right now it's still a little dry and it does have some strength to it, but not quite enough. We need to get a little bit more moisture in there. So just uh, maybe another one cup. Once it gets real close to it, it doesn't take much to get it right at the perfect uh, uh, moisture level. Okay, we added a little bit more water. We let it mull for about 30 seconds. Okay, now it's perfect. It's got strength. Okay. Now you don't want to let the sand sit out for a half an hour before you use it because the stuff the sand that's right on the top is going to lose the moisture, it's going to evaporate. So we want to use it right away. The best way to do this is probably in class, uh, if there's there'll be about four groups working in the, in the foundry at one time, you can put uh, probably four people at each, at each booth here. So uh, what you're going to do is one group will be mixing sand while the other groups are working, then you should trade off because otherwise uh, one group won't get anything done. Okay, it takes about 10 minutes or so to make a, a batch of sand. Then what you can do is you can dump it on the floor right over by uh, one of the groups and you can, you can bring it over with a shovel. So. enough for probably a couple of molds or, or at least one mold. Um, let's put the uh, whole barrel back together. Okay, at this point what we want to do is we want to add some parting powder to the, to the pattern so that the uh, sand won't stick to it. Okay? Don't put too much on, you'll end up drying out the sand. After that, you can take some sand, put it in the riddle, which is this sieve-like device, to take any impurities in the sand. You want the best sand to be in contact with the pattern. Okay, go ahead. Shake it back and forth and put a thin layer of sand on top of the pattern. Okay, after that, what you want to do is push it down with your fingertips in order to uh, get good compaction around the pattern. The reason why you use your fingertips is because you want, to, you want to compress it with a, a smaller amount of area, get more force per unit area then, okay? Okay, after that, go ahead and uh, shovel this in, 
Shove, actually shovel the sand right in. At this point, we don't care if there's any uh, particles of uh, aluminum or whatever in the sand too much, but watch your hands. Uh, take your rings and jewelry off uh, as, you're, as you're doing this. Okay, ram the sand around the outside first, and then back and forth across the center. Okay, do this in about two or three layers so that we get uh, equal compaction. If you fill the whole flask up and don't make layers, uh, you won't have a very hard mold at the bottom of it, and that's where it's important. The sand near the pattern has to be compacted the most. Spread the sand around, ram it up again. Use the pointed end of, of the rammer, okay? So that you get more pressure and so that the next layer of sand will stick to the previous layer of sand. Don't be afraid to pound on it, okay? Don't be shy. Need a striker bar. Okay, the last layer you want to use the flat end, and you don't have to kill it. Okay? The reason for that is going to make it easier to, to, to cut the rest of the sand off. Okay, this is called the strike off bar, and we're going to strike the sand off of the surface. That's why you don't have to quite ram it so hard, it makes it hard to, to pull the sand off the surface. Try to get most of the sand back into the sandbox so that you don't have to do quite as much sweeping at the end of the day. Okay, once it's uh, totally struck off, what you want to do now is put a bottom board on it. The bottom board is going to support the bottom of the flask evenly. Remember, you want to use the blue ones, and they might seem kind of small because they don't quite support the whole bottom, but you don't want to support the, the edge of the flask. You want to actually support the sand, not the flask. Okay? At this point, we're going to flip it over, and you should make sure that your bars on your... Uh, on your table are the right width to support the uh, the bottom of, of the uh, bottom board. Okay. At this point, we're going to put more parting powder on the cope side, and we're going to mold up the cope. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can eat, if you look at your drawing, we want to put a sprue. The sprue is where the metal is going to come into the mold. We want to put that right about in the center of the mold. Okay? So, we can do one of two things. We can either put the sprue in there now, and here is the sprue cutter. We can set that in here and ram sand around it, or we can look and see where it is and ram it in later. It's going to be easier to do that. Otherwise, you've got to hold this up while, you're, while you ram the sand around it. Okay? So we can actually pound this down into there and cut the sprue. You want to use the sprue that's about one half inch in diameter at the bottom. Okay? You can also use one that's tapered as well. You want to use the tapered sprue. So make sure you look at your drawing before you do this. You want to get uh, wet sand for the second time around. You don't want to use the dry sand for the fourth. Pretty much the same process on the coke side.
on the edge first, back and forth across the center. Okay, now that we remember exactly where that sprue goes, we can actually take and, and poke the sprue right exactly where it's supposed to go. Okay, you don't have to beat on this with a hammer or anything, it should go right in. If you want to go down, you can kind of give it a couple of wraps with a wooden uh, rammer. Okay, make sure you get it all the way down to the paring line. Okay, at this point what we want to do is, is cut using a slick and spoon. We're going to, this is called a slick, that's a spoon. We're going to cut the uh, pouring basin. And what that is, is we're actually going to pour metal in here. The problem is we have someone that's trying to hit this little teeny hole with a big crucible filled with aluminum. Okay, this aluminum's got to get down that hole. So we want to make it slightly larger so it's easier to pour and keep that sprue full as they're pouring. So I'm going to cut it so that it's off center to one side of the flask and we've got to go the shortest distance to the side because we're going to be pouring over here and the closer you are to the side the better off you are. Okay. And also it's offset so that the back, the back of the pouring basin is parallel with the sprue right here. Okay, and the reason for that is so the metal goes in and goes straight down the sprue right away. Make sure there's no little chunks of uh, sand adhering to the, the flax. Those will get washed into, your, uh, into the mold. Okay. Go a little wider. Okay, at this point what we're going to do is we're going to pull the cope off and uh, we'll have an impression where the pattern is. Then we're going to pull the pattern off the drag. Okay, so I'm going to take, and the easy way to do this, make sure most of the sand is off of it, off of the, the match plate. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to push my thumbs and lift up on only the coat part. You don't want to lift everything up, you just want to lift the coat off. Okay, one thing you could do, it might make the, the pattern come out easier, is you kind of give it a couple of little wraps with the rammer. Okay. You got to go straight and together. It's one of those ones that sticks. Okay, I'm going to pull the coke off. Okay, not super smooth. Some of these flasks stick a little bit, so you might actually have to put a pry bar on there. But try to lift them up as, as uh, evenly as possible off of the batter. Now let's look at the, uh, the impression and see that it came out pretty good. We have a little bit of a, um, a breakout at the end here. We can actually repair that with the, with the slick. Okay. That, and we're going to machine this bar, so we'll, we'll be okay. Set it on there on the side. Okay, now what we want to do is lift off the uh, match plate from the drag. Okay? Looks good. Okay, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to carve the gating system in. And we have to look at our drawing again to figure out how we're going to carve this. You can see that in the cope, we have this thing called a riser. The riser is an extra reservoir of metal that's going to feed molten metal into the casting as it cools. If you don't have this riser of metal here, it's going to actually have shrinkage. The metal will be sucked down on top and you won't have a round bar. Okay? So this is one of, the, one of the problems with casting is that the metal shrinks as it cools and we have to have these reservoirs of metal to feed the casting. And, and the whole idea is to have the, the Solidification or the actual cooling of the metal start at this end of the casting, 
progress toward this end of the casting. It's a lot more heat at this end than at that end. Okay, so the metal is going to come down the sprue, and it's going to go along in this runner here, into the riser, and through the gates into the casting. Okay, so these are gates. We've got a riser, it's R-I-S-E-R, -E a runner, and a sprue. And uh, we need to carve this by hand. So we're going to take our spoon again, and we're going to start carving. Okay, one of the things about these flasks is both the pins are round and both the holes are round. So that means that you can put this back together the wrong way. So it's not idiot proof. What you got to do is remember how you took the cope off and how you set it down. Make sure you put it back on. It's very difficult with this particular mold to tell if you've got it on backwards because it's only off by about a quarter of an inch. So if you put it on backwards, your bar is going to be shifted by a quarter of an inch. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the slick, we're going to lay out where we're going to cut. Where we're going to cut out in the drag, we're going to cut, cut a semicircular depression and these little gates here in the drag somewhat. And then we're going to cut out in the cope here, we're going to cut out the, uh, the actual riser. Okay, we're going to go, oh, about three inches tall. You don't want to quite go out the top of the mold though. So don't dig the china. Uh, only about three inches, okay? So about, should be about a half inch of sand left at the top. So go ahead and draw your gating system. And they have to match up, so make sure where you draw it in the drag matches up with where you draw it in the cope. It's kind of a, you can kind of measure over, uh, you can, use a ruler if you really want to or just kind of measure with your thumb or whatever. Okay? Uh, where, let me see. The other thing you want to figure out is where your sprue is going to come. The sprue is right about here. Okay? So we want to have um, your runner right about there. Okay? And we have to make a little impression underneath in order to, uh, to slow the metal down as it comes into the mold. Go ahead.
Okay, we have a semi-spherical uh, base to our riser. Get nice, generous contacts in the drag, but also look at the cope. You gotta make sure that your contacts are also in the cope so that you have, um, the idea is that this metal, that's this reservoir that's in here, has to be able to flow into the casting. If it freezes right here, we won't have any metal flowing into the casting, okay? So you don't, you don't wanna um, have your casting freeze off, okay? So what we want to do is blow the rest of the sand out. Make sure you blow the sand out of the sprue. You can kind of take the edge off the uh, uh, the bottom of the sprue so that, that this, none of that sand ends up in your casting. And I think we're ready to go. Our, our runner is in our drag. The runner is right here. These are the gates. And here is the bottom part of the riser. Metal is going to come in here, flow into the castings. It's going to start cooling here and work its way back towards the riser. That's the way we want to do it. Okay, I'm going to put the mold back together, making sure not to drop any sand on, on the open mold. And gently, we've got to make sure that this mold is completely closed. Some of these flasks bind up a little bit, so you want to look and see that you don't see any light between the cope and the drag. So make sure it's totally down. Okay? At this point, we're going to carry it over to the pouring floor and we can pour molten aluminum into it, okay? I'm going to demonstrate uh, a loose pattern molding uh, casting after this and we'll pour both of these molds together at the end of the uh, class.